in this cool tutorial series we we're working on some back to the future effects in the last video we were working on the cyber truck making it into a delorean animating the tires flying through space and in today's video we're going to be working on the flag which is being pulled by the car you can see it in the movie as well it's very iconic and today i'm going to show you how you can do that yourself inside of Blender. We're going to be using a cloth simulation for that. So in case you wonder what a cloth simulation is, you can make any object transform that into cloth. So we're simulating an object as if it was a blanket or any kind of cloth. And also I'm going to show you a little texturing trick how you can give a flag like this different colors just like that. Sup you phonies, how's it going? Welcome to another video. And I'm very excited about today because it's going to be so much fun animating this cool flag because I love making simulations, it's so much fun and today I'm going to show you how you can do that yourself. So first we need to set up our scene a little because I usually start my scene with a little Mihao and a camera, this is not Mihao, with a little model but we don't need any of that. I'm going to keep the camera for now but I'm going to delete my object, my young guy keeps his hands in pocket, we don't need them anymore. So. We're not going to start with a car. We're not going to use a car at all because it works with any object. We're just going to make, let's uh, let's create our own little car real quick. I'm just going to make a cube. I'm going to scale it like this. I'm going to scale it like this. So that's going to be our car. Just to make it look like the Cybertruck here. This is our Cybertruck now. It's pretty cool. That's exactly what a Cybertruck looks like. If anybody says something else, he's lying. So this is our Cybertruck. Cool. Now, in order for this effect to work, our car, which is this thing, has to fly around a little. So I'm going to do what I actually was teaching in the last tutorial to animate a vehicle like this on a path with curves. So I'm not going to go again through this, but if you're interested on doing that yourself, then check out my last week's video. It's right here, so you can go check it out. But I'm just going to do that right now, real quick. So I tracked my little car to this curve here and in order to be able to work with it a little smoother I'm going to parent my camera to my vehicle so wherever my car is the camera is always pointing at it just to make my workflow easier so while I'm going through this animation while it's like going around then my camera is actually following it and I can always see it on my screen up here. The way you can do that, you just select your camera, then you're going to select your object, in that case this here, or your car, whatever you're using. And now I hit Control P on my keyboard. I set parent to object, keep transform. Now when my object is moving through the scene, my camera is just following, so I can just see it better. That's the only reason. You should unparent it in the end in case you want to animate your camera, but we're not going to finish an animation today. I just want to show you the principles. Anyways, so now that our vehicle is animated on a path, now I'm going to show you actually what we're going to do with it. So we want to make this flag and attach it to this car. And for that, we need to make the flag first and the way I did it, there's a thousand different ways to model something like that, but the way I did it is very, very simple. I start with a plane. I'm going to zoom in on that. Now I'm going to select this face here on top in edit mode. So I'm going to go to edit mode there. I'm just going to select one side and scale it down like this. I could just delete the face too or delete one of the edges, but I want to keep like a little peak doesn't really matter it's up to you now we're gonna select the vertice and just select one here on the side hit E on your keyboard and X so it's basically like it's basically like the rope part great see that now I have one of those and now when I just go back to object mode what I'm gonna do is go to modifiers add modifier and add an array. I'm going to bring it on the other side so it's going to be negative one. In case for yours looks like this then you know adjust those numbers accordingly but for me it has to be negative one and then 
I can just make a bunch of those and make sure those are connected. If those are not going to be connected, the effect is not going to work. So you can make it basically as long as you like. Mine is going to be, let's say 25. It's a good length. Amazing. Now, when we're happy with that, we're going to apply our array. So now it's actually one long object. And while we're at it, go on object, set origin and origin to center. So now the origin is in the center, which could be helpful for the later simulation. Now I'm going to go to the very first frame where our thing is animated. And again, if you don't know how to animate this, go to this video because that's where I explained everything how to do that. So I'm going to have this piece here attached to the back of my car. So I'm going to zoom in here. And right now we can see my flag is way too big. You see that? It's like gigantic. It's like the size of the car and we don't want that obviously. So once it's in position, like somewhere here, I'm just going to scale it down until it has a size where I believe, okay, that's the size it has to be. A little smaller. Amazing. Now, of course, we need to give it a material because now when I go to my uh, material preview, we can see it doesn't have any material on it. Neither does my car, but it doesn't really matter. We can give the car, let's say, just to make it distinct, let's make it pink because that's my color in case you haven't noticed in this thing here. Now, I was struggling with that a little, how to give all of those things different colors because I didn't want them to be uh, having one color. And there's a very cool trick. And for that, we're going to go to Google real quick. Let's Google color palette images. And now we just go to a color palette um, where we only see colors on the screen. I don't want any black or white. Like this one is, for example. And we just save this. Make sure to save it to your folder where you have all your stuff because now when we give it a new material in our shader editor if you don't have it here just open it and click on shader editor or you can even look it up here under shading now I'm gonna add with we'll shift a a image texture and connect this with base color now I'm gonna go to edit mode make sure everything is selected hit U for UV mapping and now you can UV unwrap up here make sure to click on the UV editor and now under the image texture make sure to open the image you just downloaded and now already you can see all of this are perfectly aligned with some colors maybe by accident some might have different colors like these for example so you can just select this here so select those here and just move it to one to whatever one you want like select this one and make sure that one also goes just to one if two of the same kind or two close colors are, are together like this one just select one of them and bring this to a whole different color so it looks like different like that if it doesn't fit perfectly you can just scale it down doesn't matter in that way you can have this whole thing here in different colors very very easily just make sure, like I said, sometimes they have different colors because it's really random. Unless you, that's exactly what you want and you obviously you just leave it like this, you know, like if you want half and half. But I'm going to go for the look. They all have solid one colors. Great. Now that it's all one color, we have to attach this to our car, which is driving. And that's also very easy. First step is just Make sure you are in object mode and bring it just very close to wherever you want it to attach. With G, you can move your object like this. And now just select your flag. Then you select your object and control P. And we're going to set parent to object keep transform. Now, when we look at it, we see that it's going with it. That's obviously not what we want, but we're getting closer. You can see on the top view here how it's nicely following our car. Now the next step is to make it actually a claw simulation. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go here on our physics here and with only the flag selected hit on cloth. Now when we play it, we can see how it's just falling because it's cloth, it's just falling. It ignores the parent we made, okay? But that is fine. So the next step is what we need to do is a vertice group. What that basically means is that you can select one vertice. Let's say just for example, I'm going to select those two vertices, make this a pin group 
and those only those two vertices are going to be pinned like attached to the parent which we did before we parented it to this so those would be following that but of course we don't want those two vertices what we want is just this single piece here and this one in the front here i want this to be attached to the car and the rest is just you know attached to this so everything else is going to fall so the way we're going to do that we are in edit mode okay we're going to select this pin here you see how only this pin is selected click on data and we're going to me make a new vertex group okay we can call it flat tip okay it's a tip but before you click away make sure it's, this one is selected and hit assign okay we're halfway there now what we need is go on your in your cloth simulation okay go on physics in object mode go to shape and here you see this pin group that's exactly what we need we just click on it and this is what we just created the flag tip okay so now when we play this we see something is going wrong but also something is going right this this piece is attached everything else falls off and that honestly has never happened to me before but you see what, what it does is basically just going with it the rest is falling off but we can fix it real quick so but you see what this pin group did so it basically attaches just this piece to the car and that's exactly what we want let's go to edit mode again select everything in case that happened to you too select everything uh, go to mesh clean up merge by distance so i guess those were not perfectly attached that can happen when you do your array in the beginning i guess they were too far apart if that happens to you too that's how we just could attach them back together so now you can see how it's like flopping around it you see how cool that is it's just flopping around very cool and most of the effect is done now if you're happy with what you see here you can just go ahead and in your cloth simulation go to cache and bake this but you can even if you're not super happy with that if you want some extra action going on then you can use force fields let's say we're going to make a turbulence force field let's crank this bad boy up now when i play this you can see this goes even crazier or it can even crank it up even more see, it's very cool and again if you believe you're done just go in your simulation on your cloth select the frames you need start and end frame bake it it's going to usually take a few minutes or seconds depending on your computer and now we're done with that super cool right and feel free to experiment with the force fields because there's lots of different cool force fields you can do things with and that's very cool okay now we're going to try something else because in the last shot of the back to the future video we saw the vehicle landing and then the flag landed on our vehicle and the way we did that was is very very similar but instead of the car being animated like this it was just standing on the ground so i'm just gonna save this real quick in case i have to come back here save as flag tutorial 2. so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna delete the bake and now i'm gonna bring the car i, I deleted my curve we're basically gonna start from scratch so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna bring i'm gonna bring my car to the ground this is the ground and i'm actually gonna make a ground so you get the idea because I obviously had like a whole environment and but we can skip all that for now I'm just teaching you the principle behind it so what we want is that the the flag here is landing on my car okay so for that what I need to do is obviously bring the flag on top of my car like this and right now it's still parented from the last scene so I'm gonna unparent it with alt p I can clear parent key transformation now when it falls I see that there is still this pin group I have to remove that too because it's like still pinned it's not the simulation is not interacting with this little vertice because that's what the pin group not pin group the yeah pin group the ver uh, vertex group does so i can remove that real quick so i'm going to go to my claw simulation and remove the flag tip now it's just going to fall okay perfect i still have my turbulence on you see how it falls the turbulence is good it's exactly what we need it's basically like wind this is my turbulence here you can also just remove it if you don't want it i'm going to remove it for now so you can see what it does without it just falls you see that it just falls straight to the ground so why isn't it falling on my car that's the question very simple solution what you need is 
making the car and the ground a collision object. And for those things, everything I do here, I should have mentioned it earlier, always when you adjust the scale of something, always apply the scale. So control A, apply the scale. The car, control A, apply the scale, always, okay? Even this thing, control A, apply the scale. I always do that automatically, so sometimes I do forget to mention it, so very important. So, we're making sure that our flag is right on top of our car, okay? So when we play it, it just falls right through because we need a collision. So I'm gonna select my car here. The car is still animated, we don't need this animation anymore, it's, it just stays there. So now we're gonna go on collision. So now when I play the same thing, you can see it land, the flag lands on my car here. Awesome. Of course, it's not landing on my ground here, it's just flopping right through the ground because I need to make the ground also a collision, right? So I'm gonna go back to the very first frame and click on the ground, only the ground, make it a collision also. Now when I play it, you can see it lands on the ground. And there's a few settings you need. You don't need to, but you can um, adjust. Like for example, damping. Let's see, I'm, I have my car selected only, increase the damping completely, you see what it does. It just helps to stick to our, um, to our object. When I go on zero, you can see, just slides around a little more. Let's go in the middle. Friction, let's increase the friction by a lot. Also helps. Yeah, when you increase the friction, it's not sliding around anymore, which is may maybe what you want. So friction is a good one to know, thickness, basically when you increase this number it just adds like a meter of thickness invisible thickness which can be useful but don't increase this number too much I actually made the mistake to increase this number too high in my scene and the flag was sticking away from my car a little right now it's like on point what is it point one and it's like basically 10 centimeters away from my ground I don't want it I want maybe point zero one so it's not penetrating it but it's also not flying over it so that's what I want 0 0.01 also on my car 0 0.01 cool and now that's basically it that's all you need to do uh, let's increase the friction again friction is on inner okay and then one more thing you can do because if it just landed like this that's not what you want what you want is that it's flying around just like in the other scene where it's just floating around a little so I'm just gonna bring it into like a funny position like this right on top of the car like this and now when it falls, you can see it nicely up there or down here, it like basically falls on top of our car. Very cool. And that's exactly what I did here in the scene. Now, if you want a little more um, randomness in your flag, what again, what you can do is shift A, a force field. Turbulence is always a good one. It does a lot of work for you. Just increase the number. And you see how random it's like falling now. It makes it easier. The problem is it's still blowing around. So you can animate the value, maybe have it stronger in the beginning and hover over the strength, hit I, go a few frames uh, forward, like here maybe, hover over strength, or right, go to zero, hover over strength, hit I again. Now the strength is animating down and it stops eventually, which is cool. Another good one to use is shift A, force field, and let's use wind. The wind is right here. That's what I use to make my Thing float around a little. Let's increase this number by a lot. See how it's blowing away. And that's exactly how I made this flow, float around. See how it's flying away. I did this with the wind. And if you just remove the gravity off or like remove all of the weight from your flag, let's set the vertex mass to zero. It's not even going to fall down anymore. It's just going to fl uh, fly away. That's how you can make it fly in the wind the turbulence right now is like so strong it shouldn't get weaker now and so it's just the wind blowing it away that's how you can animate that it's very strong the noise is very strong right now and the turbulence and the wind you can add a wind noise also so all those things you can do just to an animate this a little so those are all the tools you can use to create a back to the future effect just like that i hope that was helpful and i hope you can use those uh, tips and tricks for your own scenes it doesn't matter if it's a back to the future effect or something else in my next video i'm going to show you how to make 
those smoke simulations just like that and particle simulations to have this powerful landing you can have cars landing but or or helicopters whatever you want to do i'm going to show that to you in the next video thank you so much for watching if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below and see you in the next video Doo -doo -doo.